All right, what else you got there, pal? Well, we got a bunch of questions. A lot of people have been curious about a lot of things. There's a lot of things happening in and around the world of wrestling, and of course, in and around the world of Jim Cornette. Jim, several questions have come in. I'm going to assume you saw it, but I'll ask you one of the questions in a moment, but let me ask you if you have. Did you see Chris Jericho's recent comments about you? I did not when they originally took place, but a few people sent them after the fact, uh, and we were all getting a good giggle out of them. But you can prep the people for those of you who aren't up on things. Well, I'll read this question sent to corny drive through at gmail.com from Cam Domaski in Westmoreland County, Western Pennsylvania. Oh, we're supposed to believe that name? There's nothing wrong with that name. It sounds legitimate. What? Cam Domaski? All right, if you say so. Don't ask me about Damasky. You have a problem with Cam or Damasky? I'm not sure whether Cam de- goes with Damasky. Cameron. Well, uh, then why didn't he say it that way? Well, I mean, I'm assuming Cameron Damasky. I'm assuming it sounds, it's short for sounds a little more a little more palatable, a little more upscale than Cam Damasky. There's nothing that seems illegitimate about this man or his email, but let's ask his question What's here. What's his question? Hello, Jim and Brian. Chris Jericho is back at it again after a fan commented this on an AEW Instagram post, which he attached here, I'll read you that in a moment, about the cage match between Wardlow and Jake Hager. Chris Jericho responded, I'd like to ask Jim about his thoughts on this and if he thinks Jericho or other people in AEW are on the roster, still listen to his podcast. (laughs) And here is, we don't see all of everything in this uh, screen capture here, but I guess it was a clip of the Wardlow Jake Hager MMA match, which a lot of people hated and a lot of people liked. It really split people down the middle. Someone posted it and someone responded, The best thing about this, Cornette will have a field day on his podcast. I can't wait. Ha ha ha. Yes. Just a fan exercising his right to free speech, giving his opinion, right? To which the verified account of Chris Jericho Fozzy replied, (laughs) Wow, really? Who the fuck cares what Cornette thinks? Dude hasn't been relevant since the 90s, and he got fired from the last mainstream gig he had a few years ago for making (laughs) racist remarks. So, I'm asking you, are you a racist? And I will, I do want to add to this because the next reply is actually pretty great. Another person jumps in and replies, Your wife and mom-in-law were at the Capitol (laughs) on January 6th. Fuck all the way off with your bullshit excuse of a run in AEW and your donations to Trump. You're more racist than corny can ever be, Junior. But Jim, that is the question from Uh, Cam, and this is the actual quote, as was written from the verified account of Chris Jericho. Yes. What are your thoughts on this? I think he's melting down, and I think it's driving him crazy that I will not stop calling attention to the things that they do on national television every week, and it's driving him up the wall. And Chris, I, you know, I haven't been relevant since the 90s when I discovered his ass. Maybe that's the last good thing that I did in his mind. I don't know why that he would say that since I was relevant enough that, what was it, was it four years ago and five years ago, he came back-to-back years to play with Fozzie here in Louisville, and he called me both times and asked me to do his podcast. One time, he actually had me meet him over at a, a recording studio here so we could have good audio. The second time, I guess Fozzie wasn't doing so well. He just taped it on a little thing in, in his hotel room, and then I dropped him off where he was playing the Fozzie concert. It was a crummy building in a part of town I didn't really want to be in, so I dropped him <laughs> off at the back door without getting out of Black Beauty and took off afterwards. Um, so I guess he, you know, he was just doing a charity, a uh, little charitable thing for me, being so irrelevant with by him coming to my town and asking me to be on his podcast when I was minding my own business. I think it's more indicative, as I said, of the fact that they cannot get over the fact that people are listening to me because they're seeing the same thing. And they just happen to be more entertained by the way that I put things than the way that their fucking cousin Bill does it or whatever. That's why people are listening because they're just as disgusted with the state of wrestling these days as I am. But Chris can't come out and say that his program that he's on needs a lot of fucking help because that would insult the guy whose money he's taken 
and all of the kids that are allowing him to play with the cool, cool, cool kids at school. Plus, he doesn't um, realize that that's the one thing I, I still disagree with you on. He's one of the morons. <laughs> it's not like he's like, well, I'm just taking the money. I'm going to let everyone do stupid things. No, he wants to do stupid things, too. He's one of the stupid. And that's that's fine because it runs in a family, I guess. Because, again, I'm a racist. I'm a, I'm such a racist that no members of my immediate family were in Washington on January 6th taking selfies in front of a, an insurrection against the United States government trying to overthrow the lawfully and legally elected sane people that might be able to fix all the shit that the guy that he's given tens of thousands of dollars to fucked up. Or, here's another thing, since he's lying to begin with, Chris Jericho's in the business. Chris Jericho knows what the, let's say, what the uh, the budgets are for some of the companies. And Chris Jericho knows that I didn't get fired from my last gig like it was a gig, that I got sideways with liver lip Lagana because he wouldn't take any of the fucking blame on himself when he shared in it and couldn't uh, convey the fact that I told an old joke and instead tried to cover up his ass. I was doing shit for them as a favor. They were paying me to come down to it, to basically to drive to Atlanta and back. I was working for them for free. It was a minute amount of money, not for the NWA. Honestly, I was making more money than anybody in the NWA except Nick Aldis, but it was still a minute amount of money per show for which I did too. And that's the gig that I supposedly lost. So never try to do anybody any favors. But see, Jericho knows that. He knows it was a negligible amount of my money or anybody's money in this instance. And he knows that it wasn't a goddamn full-time job. Like I'm suddenly the fucking lead announcer on Raw. But no, we've, we've put an end to that. He's trying to paint in his ridiculously slanted a light as possible any way any reason that people can doubt what i say any any that's what they it, and it, you know it's been a year since they came up with the last big round trying to get me canceled i'm a pervert and have you know malfeasanced my office in ovw and stacy's such a horrible person they made that up about a year ago hot tub and, Hot tub, and that didn't work because it was all bullshit and everybody figured it out, except for the people that don't want to know the truth because they want to hate me. The more that they can say that I'm a miserable person and I'm a racist and I'm a sexist and I'm a pervert and I fucking, you know, just have horrible, horrible grooming habits, that in their mind discounts my opinion. And that in their mind, discounts people listening to me when I'm telling the truth about the stupid bullshit that these guys do. So they can try all they want, but people have seen through it because guess what? I don't get canceled because there's no reason to cancel shit and you can't cancel it anyway. You can't cancel me unless you put me in jail because I do my own thing. I don't work for anybody. And I don't give a fuck what anybody else thinks. So otherwise than putting me in Alcatraz, you're not going to cancel me. Here's an idea. Put on a better fucking program that I don't have to fucking tear apart piece by piece every week. Yeah. Maybe that might work. Yeah. And you, you heard the newest one, right? When we talked about the Forbes, the way you told me this, you talk, we talked about the Forbes article on Tony and his land of misfit toys and his human action figures. And in the picture, even though Brandy's been off TV for what, nine months now, they just had a baby. She had to be in the picture. And so I said, oh, Jesus Christ, it looks like she's she's so big, she's smuggling a watermelon under her dress. Well, then you called me yesterday. You said, well, people are mad at you, Guinness. What now? Well, you said that Brandy looked like she was smuggling a watermelon under her dress. And I said, well, what? Is the pregnant woman lobby now mad at me because pregnant women are fat and obese? And you know, I'm sorry, pregnancy, I've been medical phobic all my life. And pregnancy to me looks painful and uncomfortable. So it skeeves me out. I don't know where all these naked pictures of pregnant people have, have come into fashion over the last few years where everybody gets pregnant has to have a naked picture put out on the internet. It looks uncomfortable to me. I'd rather not go through all of that. For the but record, you, I, I didn't say people were upset. I said someone's trying to stir people up. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, but the same, the same people, the people that 
are mad because more people listen to me and more people watch our shit and more people know who I am than they are. And they, so they, and, and I'm right about them when I speak about them. So they try to stir <laughs> up other people. Um, but anyway, you said, no, it's not because of the pregnancy people. It's because it's racist. I said, what, how is calling a pregnant woman fat racist? And then I realized Brandy was black. And I forgot about that because it wasn't important and it wasn't germane to the fucking conversation. But who's more racist? A person who actually forgets the race of the person that they're speaking about and just comments on their giant bulbous stomach? Or a person who hears someone reference a tasty, popular, juicy fruit or vegetable? I'm not actually sure which one is which. It's a fruit. Is it okay that a pet tasty, juicy fruit and immediately attaches a racist connotation to it when it's talking about the fact that most pregnant women are fat and bulbous and look uncomfortable and potentially painful? Especially, they, especially when the person doing the accusing is the person well, I was <laughs> who about did to a say, promo in blackface. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, okay, I forgot about that one. But the, the uncool ghoul is so desperate for attention. The podcasting's weirdest YouTuber is so dead. They said, well, if I just put, they, he actually put a clip, just like a clip of our show. See how that works out for you in the long run since this shit's copyrighted, pal. But put a clip of our show of me saying that, to just, it, just to put an inflammatory headline on it. Because then you say, well, <sighs> I'm gonna do, do, I do need the, the, the money. The I need yeah. the money. What else am I gonna do? Uh, I ran a Wikipedia. You have money. I've got to pay my managers. I have to pay up my portion of the rent to mom and dad from the basement. Uh, I don't think his parents. I could have been a star. Him. I could have been a contender. Uh, but anyway, I'll pay you three hundred dollars uh, to talk to me on Skype. Uh, uh, uh. But anyway, so the same thing with Jericho's comments. There's got to be something wrong with him. We've got to be able to figure out something wrong with him. Why people shouldn't listen to him? No, I'm just actually telling the observable truth about what's going on. It's shitty wrestling, and that's what I do these days. Since I don't need to work anymore, is I talk about what they've done to my business and how they've made it shitty wrestling. And every time I, w I just, I wish one thing I wish if, if they were going to insist that I have made horrible remarks about poor Cody and Brandy's baby, I wish they'd have waited till I got the new Jim .com up in my brand new web store for Cornette's collectibles, because every time that they make up another one of these fic fictitious controversies to try to get me canceled, it bumps my income up, but I couldn't take advantage of this one, weak as it was, because my merchandise is not even on sale because I'm so busy, I can't bother to sell my own merchandise. And by the way, we would wait a few months until they put the belt on the baby. When they put the belt on the baby, <laughs> JimCornette.com is going to be online, brother, because I'm going to get another. Hey, last summer, to be honest with you, when I turned out to be a pervert, that was a six-figure boost in my income. So I'm interested to see if they can top that one. What else they can make up next will probably allow me to retire on a comfortable basis. But back, anyway, back and that's to Jericho. Of Jericho's tweet. And in terms of the relevancy thing, I mean, the thing that still to this day makes me laugh, everyone's entitled to their opinion. And I won't even talk about numbers or audience size or which podcast is more successful, which the answer is obvious. I won't even say anything else about someone else's numbers. But the relevancy thing gets me because you could say he's not relevant, Chris, and the Bucks can say that and tell themselves he's not relevant and Kenny could say that. Unfortunately, the guy who signed your checks may think a little differently. That must suck. What the fuck also, what do you have to do to be relevant? I have audio clips that we record on Skype that have <laughs> nearly as many views on YouTube as their television program. What do you want a boy to do? I'm trying to retire over here. I got the Monroe brothers doing stonework out in the yard. I got things to keep an eye on. 
So how much more relevant do I need to be? I ain't got time to be this relevant. Jim Cornette's not relevant. So I'm going to reply to this random person I've never seen before and let him know that. <laughs> what? It's hitting, as Dennis Condry used to say, looks like we struck a nerve. We keep striking a nerve, and they can't come back with facts, and they certainly can't come back with witty repartee. So they just have to fucking try to make shit up to fire up the sad little folks that believe all of their bullshit.